Good evening, everyone. I am APAC President Betsy Burns Korn. Over the past year, we've seen dramatic breakthroughs in Israel's quest for peace. The new relations between Israel and the UAE, Bahrain, Sudan, and Morocco means that half the Arab population of the Middle East and North Africa now live in countries with formal diplomatic ties with the Jewish state. It's an incredible change and an exciting time. I think about this transformative moment with tremendous pride. These four agreements are a byproduct of our community's tireless work with Congress to strengthen and expand the U.S.-Israel relationship and ensure that the security and viability of the Jewish state is not up for debate. The Abraham Accords reinforced that those seeking peace and prosperity benefit from a relationship with Israel. Tonight, I'm honored to be joined by the Foreign Minister of Morocco, His Excellency Nasser Borida, whose country has a deep history with the United States, a rich Jewish history, and a fascinating, albeit quiet history with Israel. Minister Borida, thank you so much for joining us this evening. And let me start by saying Ramadan Mubarak. Thank you. Thank you very much, Pitsy, for the invitation and uh, for this opportunity to exchange with you. Thank you also, and Ramadan Mubarak to all those who are fasting. So Morocco is a country of great interest to many of our members, and many have ties with Morocco. Can you talk to us a little bit about the historic ties of Morocco and the Jewish community, both in Morocco and in Israel? I wonder if we can talk about Morocco and the Jewish community as a separate bodies, because uh, they are one community. The Jewish population has lived in Morocco for centuries. They are part of the Moroccan population. They have nourished and enriched the Moroccan identity. And that's why our constitution may be the, the only one in the Arab and Islamic world which is mentioning the Jewish component as, a, the comp as an important component of the Moroccan identity. This relation is also about a relation between the Jewish community and the Moroccan monarchs. A very long history, back to the 15th century when, when the Jewish community was expelled from Andalusia. They were welcomed in Morocco. Late King Mohammed V rejected the anti-Semitic laws of the Vichy uh, regime and refused to hand over the uh, Moroccan Jewish community to the Nazi regime. He said, if you take them, take my sons also. And today, His Majesty the King Mohammed VI is doing a lot also to preserve this uh, uh, legacy. His Majesty ordered also the renovation of almost 170 cemeteries and uh, holy sites in Morocco and more than uh, almost 20 synagogues have, have been restored. Uh, today, in our uh, uh, school curricula, the reference to the Jewish component of the Moroccan history is there, uh, and which is a unique fact in the Arab and the Islamic uh, world. And uh, Morocco is the only Arab and Islamic country with Jew Jewish communities still living here, with its synagogues, with its uh, uh, tribunals, with its, uh, uh, all its uh, structures as a normal component of the Moroccan, uh, Moroccan uh, identity and the Moroccan people. So that's why this relation is very particular. It's unique in the Arab world, and it has been uh, uh, safeguarded by uh, the commitments of the kings of Morocco, but also the willingness of the Moroccan people. Thank you for that explanation. I think that's really important for uh, not just our members, but for everyone to understand. Uh, Morocco also has uh, relations with Israel. Can you describe to us a little bit about, um, in December, the decision to enhance this relationship with Israel? Uh, to understand the relation uh, with Israel, we should, we sh you should link it to the relation with the Jewish community. Uh, it's uh, for Morocco that was a, a normal relation we had contacts for years we had formal relations uh, in 1994 and uh, uh, people to people relation was kept 
Of course, there was uh, a break in the formal diplomatic relations for some years, but the contacts with uh, Israel didn't stop. As His uh, Majesty uh, King Mohammed VI said, this decision of Morocco in December is not an opportunistic decision. It's a decision of conviction, and it is a natural decision because of these uh, ties and because of the involvement, the historical involvement of, of Morocco in peace. This is uh, it's a very exciting time. And if you can just give us an idea of, of uh, some ways now that we're in this moment to, to strengthen the interaction between the two peoples. After the 10th of December, where the declaration of restoring the, um, the relations was, uh, was, uh, was made, there was an agreement, a trilateral agreement signed uh, some days after between Morocco, Israel, and the United States. And uh, this document, uh, a legally binding document, has different components. A recognition by the United States of Moroccan uh, sovereignty over the Sahara, uh, commitments by Morocco to develop the relations with Israel, and a commitment by Israel also to engage in a deep cooperation with the Kingdom of Morocco. Since that moment, we have uh, taken concrete steps uh, to uh, translate into facts this de declaration. The liaison offices have been opened in Rabat and in, in Tel Aviv, and they are working normally today with diplomats. We have established also eight working groups on diplomacy, security, water, agriculture, tourism, etc., where we need to uh, deepen the cooperation. So we have today uh, all the tools for cooperation. We have also the political willingness. Uh, I, I hope very soon we will uh, exchange high-level visits. The sky is the only limit. And uh, we are, as His Majesty said, we, uh, Morocco is, um, is sincere in this commitment. And as it is a decision of conviction, we will go as, as far as possible in developing the bilateral cooperation uh, for the benefit of the two people and the, for the benefit of the region also. It, it really does sound like the sky's the limit. That's, uh, that's fantastic. So you mentioned a trilateral relationship between the U.S., Israel, and Morocco. So I just want to um, talk about the U.S. for a second. Uh, I, many people might not know that the U.S. and Morocco signed a Treaty of Peace and Friendship in 1786. So can you tell us a little bit about the U.S. and Morocco relationship now? We have a strong political uh, component through a strategic dialogue. We have a military commission to coordinate. We are the only African country to have an FTA, a free trade agreement, with the United States. We are uh, a non-NATO ally of the United States since 2004, and we have uh, a very uh, counter-terrorism and military uh, uh, component. So the relation is uh, deeply rooted, the relation is adapted. Today we can work also on climate change, we can work on developing Africa, and we can work for promoting peace, in, uh, including in the Middle East. Morocco uh, cut off ties with Iran in 2018 because of Hezbollah activity in Morocco. At APAC, um, we're very focused on Iran and its surrogates and the threats to not just this region, but to the entire world. Uh, so, so what is Morocco doing about um, the activity with Iran and its surrogates? And, and how do you see working with um, uh, friends like uh, the US and Israel to combat that uh, threatening activity? So uh, the threat is, uh, is the same. And uh, we need to coordinate, we need uh, to, um, uh, to work as allies to face these, uh, these threats. Maybe people know more about uh, Iran nuclear activities, but Iran is also uh, acting through proxies to destabilize North Africa and West Africa. Uh, Iran has been uh, threatening Moroccan uh, territorial integrity and its security by supporting Polisario, by giving arms to Polisario, and by uh, training 
polisario militia to attack Morocco. Iran is also spreading through the Hezbollah its activities in West Africa. And today we 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 are still vigilant to the threats Iran is presenting to our security and uh, to uh, the security of the Moroccan people. As you know, the Sahara issue is crucial for Morocco. Its territorial integrity is, 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 is the key of the stability of this country. All those who are trying to destabilize Morocco are using the Sahara issue as a tool. And Iran, Hezbollah, and Polisario are doing the same. So that's why uh, it's, it's very important also uh, while giving attention to the uh, to what Iran is doing in in its nuclear program or in uh, uh, acting against some uh, of its neighbor to pay attention to what Iran is doing to other allies uh, of uh, of the United States in this uh, in this uh, area of the world so Morocco took a a real leadership role among Arab states in normalizing relations with Israel. Uh, how do you see Morocco uh, moving forward and may maybe um, inspiring other Arab countries to uh, also normalize relations with Israel? We think that uh, the regional dynamic is very important. Regional stability is very important even for promoting uh, peace between Israel and, and uh, Palestine. Morocco has had a pioneer role in the, uh, in the Middle East process. And Morocco is ready today also to contribute to that. We, um, Morocco has been against this, um, uh, this, those who are uh, challenging the, the even existence of Israel. Morocco was against that, that even in the 80s. And late King Hassan II was clear in Fez in 81, that the, the normal relations with Israel could be a tool for peace. But at the same time, we hope that all the efforts will be made from all parts, including from Israel, to promote a genuine peace, a peace which will preserve it, the security of Israel, the security of its people, the stability, but which also allow uh, the Palestinians to get their rights. Morocco has been successful in bringing uh, some Arab countries, even Egypt in the 70s or others after. But uh, uh, Morocco is willing to contribute to that, the regional dimension, by making uh, uh, other Arab countries join in this region, positive regional dynamic, but also promoting peace and talks between Israelis and Palestinians for, to resolve this long-standing issue. His Majesty has been also defending the, uh, uh, the special status of J Jerusalem to be open to, uh, to the three uh, religions and to keep its special status as, uh, w as an area where all the believers could pray for God. And we are in Ramadan today, and it is important uh, to, uh, to promote also these values of toler tolerance and values of accepting each other uh, uh, in, in that part of the world also, as it was the case in Morocco, as it is the case in Morocco for years. What happened in Morocco could be, uh, uh, could be an inspiration for others. Thank you, Minister. That is inspiring. And uh, it has been a pleasure and an honor speaking with you. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, before the, the, the call, uh, I, I really look forward to coming to visit in person. Thank you. I take it as a commitment to come very soon to visit us here in Morocco. You will be most welcome. Thank you. It was a pleasure talking to you, Bitty.